Hello and welcome to Good Hoops. Uh, my name is Dustin and I did a video earlier in the season about them already, but the Memphis Grizzlies continue to just completely surpass all expectations. And at the forefront of that is Ja Morant, who has officially broken out and has blossomed into one of the league's brightest young superstars, basically before our eyes, uh, night in and night out. He capped off an incredible month of February with a record-setting, franchise-setting, career-high 52-point performance against the Spurs. And what I mean when I say uh, franchise-setting is that is the first 50-point game in the entire history of the Memphis Grizzlies basketball team. <laughs> and that comes the, the game after setting a previous career-high with 46 points against the Bulls. Uh, since the All-Star break, the man has been operating at a different level, uh, voted an All-Star starter, which is a, an achievement in itself as the uh, as a, as a player in a small market, quote unquote, uh, such as Memphis, to have crossed over and to have that that main mainstream popularity um, and name recognition is is huge for such a young player, and probably more so than any of the the personal accolades and achievements. Um, the Memphis Grizzlies are sitting third in the Western Conference right now, with about twenty games to go. And they're coming off of a February where they won 8 out of 10 of their games. They are firing on all cylinders. The team has completely adopted the same mentality as Jaw. That attacking, killer, never satisfied, go right at you. I think earlier in the season he said, we want all the smoke. Like They have been embodying that attitude this whole season. And they're not catching teams off guard and like winning on like the, oh, oh we underestimated them. They're just flat out beating these teams. And as the engine of it all, um, Jaw continues to just grow and blossom, not just on offense. His efficiency has gone up. He's, he's hitting outside shots way more consistently, yes. But his all-around impact on the game, where if rebounds and assists, and specifically, too, on the defensive end, has the Memphis Grizzlies ceiling way higher than I think anyone expected, and especially considering they're not 100% yet. They're still without Dylan Brooks, who has missed a large part of the season. So when he comes back and they get that extra shooting in, it's going to be really interesting to see what that does to the to the whole team chemistry and everything that they have. But it, it, all this talk, especially because last night Ja had a couple incredible highlight reel career ending. Like at the end of his career, these plays might be on his highlight reel. He had a dunk on poor Jakob Pertl just trying to do his job and Ja absolutely just climbed the ladder and destroyed him with a poster. Uh, yet another, I think I tweeted that Ja's trying to collect posters like Infinity Stones now. He's just, every night it seems like it's another unbelievable dunk. Uh, so that would have been enough. But along with that, we get uh, the incredible last second alley-oop four tenths of a second left on the clock Steven Adams hucks it down court with a beautiful I don't think I've seen enough credit given to Steven Adams for this beautiful pass that he threw but it was like he could be a starting quarterback for like 14 teams next season in the NFL the the dime that he threw and then jaw catches it lobs it up and gets the bucket four tenths of a second left and they run that play I had to watch it multiple times because I thought it was fake. Like, just seeing how it all played out was unreal. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So, highlight plays night in and night out. The whole team playing just aggressive, different. I, I just, I, I don't even know how to put it. So, the old Grizzlies identity was like grit and grind. And this team is just pure grind. They will, they will run you up and down the court. They will shoot you out of the gym. They will not back down if you try to, try to, you know push them around or bully them and it, it might even just be all grit no grind because they they are proving that they can win these games whether it's a track meet or if it's a if it's a defensive showcase or a defensive struggle and after last night's 52 point performance which he did on 22 of 30 shooting including four of four from three there was a lot of talk about jaws ceiling and a lot of hyperbole and exaggerations comparing him to other players because that is what the media does. That is what the league is, basically, is comparing players to older players. And people started saying, you know, Jaws is the closest thing we've seen to <clears throat> prime Derrick Rose. 
prime Russell Westbrook, prime like any of those those guys. Specifically though, the Derrick Rose comparison is where I wanna I wanna um, talk about this because Derrick Rose, 22 years old, was the league MVP, the youngest MVP in the history of the league, which coincidentally Jaws age right now. And based on even how he's playing, there's a good chance he's pushed himself into that MVP conversation, even though it's kind of felt like it's been Embiid, Jokic, and Giannis this whole time. Uh, DeMar DeRozan as well, I think, should definitely get a lot of consideration. But it feels like Ja is kind of just dragging, like, him, not dragging himself, but, like, forcing himself in there. Like, they're not leaving him in the dust. Like, he is going to make himself a part of that conversation. And if the Grizzlies finish the second or third seed, I don't think they can catch the first seed. But if they finish as like the second seed in the West and a a heavy home court advantage team in that that stacked Western Conference, I think he's going to get a lot more votes than we expect. And I think it's going to just be a matter of time, probably two or three years before he is a league MVP. And I don't know where the comparison... like. Comparing him to Derrick Rose, it's it's obvious. You have the playmaking flourishes. You have the explosion when he's on the court. You have the unbelievable bounce, the incredible highlight reel plays, the the pure force of will and athleticism. But I just I get the feeling that that that's not gonna just be Jaw's game, and then he's going to you know obviously Derrick Rose. We don't know what would have happened because of all of the injuries. Um, which is a shame. It's one of the biggest what ifs in the NBA's history. I think is what if he didn't get hurt? What if he continued playing at that level? Um, and I just I get the feeling that Jaw's the type of player that's going to continue to work on those parts of his game, those outside shooting, the pull up shooting, because it it's too obvious to me. Like the the finesse and athleticism players the mileage they put on their bodies as fast as they do. And I, and I, I get the sense that the younger players not are smarter, but I, I think the younger players have a lot of examples to pull from. So like a John Wall or a Russell Westbrook are, are two really clear examples of guys that could just be athletic, just be better athletes than the people they were playing against. And they could do incredible things and have this advantage because they were just better athletes and they relied on explosion and they relied on their ability not to say they didn't work on other things, but like their their pure athletic ability was what, you know, what pushed them to have such an advantage. And I think seeing, you know, how fast injuries can, can debilitate those those talents and those abilities, I think it's safe to say that a lot of these young players know the importance of taking care of their bodies. That said, there's like two or three moments every single game where Ja is like falling to the ground weirdly or landing awkwardly. He had that injury scare like earlier this week or last week, where it like, looked like he had like sprained something in his leg. So I like to say that I think that it seems like he probably knows he's going to, or not even knows, but he's probably going to just want to keep adding these things to his game. Um, but the, the comparisons are so interesting, and it's, and it's interesting to think about what his total ceiling will end up being. Like, will he be a multiple-time champion? Will he be a multiple-time... MVP of the league like I think he gets at least one MVP I think he will be an all-star starter probably the rest of his career barring injury um if not just an all-star in general but I would imagine probably a starter because he's only going to get more popular as he continues to put Memphis on the map and have these incredible highlight reel plays it's not like it's going to make him less popular and through all of this it's just so interesting to think about the the comparison with him and Zion when you see what's happening with Zion in New Orleans and the thought that you know he may already be done with that team he may already be looking to be traded he's played 14 games for the team in front of fans he's missed over 100 games in his first few years with the team to injury he hasn't played at all this season so it sounds like with 20 games left there's no incentive for him to come back and you just you know you look at it and you think man Zion was like considered like a a winning lottery ticket like that was like the surest sure thing you could get and now here we are where John Morant the second pick in the draft is looking like the best player that was in that draft um, regardless of the the issues that Zion has had but moreover than that like he went to he went to Memphis he immediately bought in and that team has been on the right track ever since 
he's probably going to be a multiple time MVP. He's probably going to be a, like, I don't want to say probably going to be a champion with the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies really remind me of like that 2015 Warriors team that put everyone on notice and said, Hey, this is what we're all about. We're coming, be ready. And assuming people can stay healthy and everyone continues to develop and gel the way that they have, there's nothing to me that that says the Grizzlies can't be one of those top contending teams for years to come. I think they're going to surprise a lot of teams, even though they've been as good this year as they've been. I think when the playoffs start, they're going to surprise the teams that they play. I think this is probably a Western Conference Finals team. I don't know if they push themselves all the way to the finals this year. I think this might just be like, a, well, what a good experience it was for them. But I think the ceiling for this team with their their depth, their youth, their their chips on their shoulder already too. Like they have this mentality that, you know, they don't need to lose in the playoffs to be like pissed off and wanting to prove something in the playoffs. And I think all of that adds up to a team that, you know, has a confidence and they have a feeling that they should be there. They should be there at the end. And I think that that type of mindset for a team that young that clearly knows what they're doing from a front office standpoint for as far as signings and specifically drafting, um, they're set up very nicely for, you know, a, a long time to come. And with him as the engine of all of that powering it all, it's only going to take their ceiling higher. So I think I, I understand where the comparisons come as far as like Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, uh, those types of explosive players. John Wall, I said earlier as well. Um, I think, though, the, the most important thing is to just enjoy the show that Jaw is putting on because Jaw is one of one. And the things he's doing, we have not seen other players do. So rather than get than get stuck trying to decide you know, who he most reminds us of, I think it's best to just enjoy the ride because night in and night out, he's absolutely must-see TV. Um, and that's... That's all I have. Uh, let me know what you think about the Grizzlies, what you think Jaws ceiling might be as far as like champion, all-star, how many, you know, how many awards, accolades, that type of stuff. Please uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I will be back soon.